Okay, so this is going to be a fairly quick video. Um, this exercise is very straightforward, um, but very useful. So um, I think what I'm going to be doing with this exercise is showing you a non-destructive technique for doing this. So it will be slightly different than what the um, what the instructions say, and I'm going to make it bonus points. If you if you're able to do it the way I'm showing in the video here, and I just like people to see how um, these smart filters work, um, because what you'll see when we go through the steps here, and I will show it to you. But first, let's get into the exercise, right? So this is exercise two. We're on unit two. Um, we are in this unit going to be learning about. Photoshop's powerful filters, okay? So filters can help to create effects in our photos that change the overall appearance of the image in certain ways depending on the settings you choose. Filters can sharpen or blur an image, apply special effects to the image, or modify the image in various ways. Okay, when paired with different blending modes, you can transform photos into images that look like handmade illustrations, paintings, etc. We're going to learn a few of those techniques, um, apply them um, to um, some images that we choose, and use it for our second project. Okay, and also I'm going to show you how smart filters can make non-destructive changes. Okay, um, because one of the ways that filters work is you go into a separate window, and it gives you a preview of what the filter is doing. And then once you select the settings on that filter, it applies it and you're kind of done with it. But if we're using smart filters and smart objects, then um, those what changes you made in the filter can be turned on and off and can be edited at a later point, which the old filters um, didn't allow for. Okay, so first um, go through the steps in exercise two. Sorry, I'm making some, some coffee here. I've got creamers. Go through the steps in exercise two to learn about a few of the filter and blending modes available and then move on to the instructions in project two. Okay, so we go into our exercise two file here, which this is published now. Obviously, I'm recording the video tutorial. As soon as I am done with this, I will upload it and post the link in here. The directions are, download the image that we'll be applying the effects to, chicken.jpg. I've already downloaded that, so let's just go ahead and pull that into Photoshop. This is our chicken file. Okay, and as you can see, we it's exactly what it says. It's a chicken, right? Um, let me move Photoshop over here. I don't want I've got to be in the practice of not covering what I'm doing with any of the windows here. Okay, so we've got our, our chicken file. Um, step two is to follow along the, with this tutorial to complete the exercise. Okay, and this is this is the PDF that um, explains how this works. Let me just size this window down here. Can I zoom in? Yeah, zoom in on the sky a little bit. Oh, okay. So we have our original image. It says first to create six groups and name them watercolor, pencil drawing, dry brush plus graphic pen, poster edges, find edges and diffuse, and color halftone. So obviously those are all the different filters that we're gonna be applying to our image, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in after I add some cream to my coffee, and I'm going to create some new groups, okay? And the groups, creating groups, is very easy to do. It is just this little folder looking icon right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six groups. Um, and I'm gonna name them as it says. Watercolor, pencil drawing,
dry brush and graphic pen, poster edges, find edges and diffuse and color halftone. Okay, so now I've got all my groups. Obviously that is the name of the effects that we're going to be doing to our image. Um, and now I'm going to show you the difference very quickly. Well, first we'll take a look at what the filters are and take a look at the filter gallery. And then I'm going to show you the difference between using smart filters and smart objects and using the normal filters, okay? So you, you won't be doing this part of it for your assignment, but this is for instruction purposes. I'm going to duplicate my background by pressing Command J. And I'm just going to go up to Filter. It's a whole menu item. So there's all these different filters that you can choose from, and you may have seen me use some of these um, in the last unit. Okay, but You can also go to this Filter Gallery which opens up a new dialog window, giving you a preview of what that filter does. Okay, so in the normal way of using filters, this opens up this other window, and I can go in and select some of these different filters, and based on, for example, I've selected the rough pastels, and it tries to give it a treatment as if you were using a pastel crayon to make the drawing. It doesn't always look accurate to that, so go off of what you know, your preview looks like instead of what the name says. If I um, increase the stroke detail, it feels a little bit more like a sketchy effect. So each of these filters has their own unique settings that go along with the filter, okay? And you may or may not be able to use a filter on the, um, on the default setting. Um, you know, it might be that a filter really works, but only when you get a very specific setting. So um, these take a little bit of exploration to get used to what they're doing. Um, this one's a good one, sometimes paint daubs. And see how, so it's, what it does is it takes an area and basically averages the color and then gives it an effect to make it look like it's a little paint stroke or something. So when I increase the size of the brush, it obviously can get very blurry. Okay, because it's saying that you used a very large brush to, to create that space of paint. Okay, large brush, large sharpness, gets this really weird kind of um, effect going on. I don't, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's like these kind of traced outlines of each of the shapes happening. Okay, so each of these filters, and, and there's a lot, there's a whole lot of filters in the filter gallery. And each one of them does something slightly different, okay? Stained glass, gives it a paper texture, mosaic, patchwork, okay? And so what we're going to be doing for this exercise is exploring what these do. Now I'm just going to pick one of these, and for the purposes of illustration, I'll, I'll pick palette knife and hit OK. When I hit OK, we go back into the normal Photoshop window, and that's done. This, this um, copy that I made has those changes that were selected applied to it, and that's it. It's done. You can't change them unless you actually do an undo, and then go back into Filter, and go back into Filter Gallery, and find your thing, and adjust it. Okay. Um, what I'm giving bonus points for, and what I want you to try to do when you're doing this project, is instead, once you, before you duplicate this more um, for the purposes of making six copies, like the instructions say, um, go ahead and just right click where the name is and go to convert, convert smart objects. Okay? If you don't have your, if you're on a Mac and, and you don't have right click set up, um, you can go in and set it up under preferences or you can just control click. That gets you to the same thing, but just convert to smart object. Okay, and what you'll see is there's a little icon that shows up in the corner of the image. And that's when you hover over that, it says smart object thumbnail. 
okay? And that's how you know that this is not a smart object. Now, if I go into filters and filter gallery, I'm just going to go ahead, I've, I've still got the palette knife selected, I'm just gonna hit okay again. What you'll notice is that this object now has this kind of sub layer to it called smart filters. And I can turn on and off the um, eye, little eyeball for the filter gallery and it is turning on and off um, that filter that's applied. Okay, I can turn um, my, all my filters off. I can go back into this filter where these little slider icon is and double click that and um, go into blending options. I can also just double click on the name of the, on where it says filter gallery. And it brings me back into the options for that filter and I can change them after the fact. Okay, so this is non-destructive, a non-destructive way of editing this image. Now, uh, what are the problems with this? Well, filter galleries can sometimes take a lot of mem memory and video RAM to process and apply. So if you're working with, you know, five, ten different filters inside of a Photoshop file, every time you like try to move the image or resize it, it has to reapply all those filters and it can take a long time and take a lot of memory. So normally the way you use these smart filters is to get them in place, um, mess with a filter that you may or may not want to keep and see how it works as you continue to work on the project. And then once you're sure you're going to keep it the way it is, you can just go back in to the, the um, layer, right click on the name, and go to rasterize layer. And what that will do is it will take um, all of the edits that you have on it apply them and put it into a layer that is not um, a smart layer. Okay, don't worry about uh, rasterize layer for the purposes of this exercise. I want you guys to just be applying the smart filters to the layers and um, leaving it in that state. And, I, and that's how I'm going to do it as I go through my steps here. Um, you can choose to not use smart filters um, in which case you just won't get the bonus points. So free six points if you do this and turn it in on time. So I say go for it. But you know, it's your, it's, you know, it's not bonus points are just that bonus points. You don't have to take them if you don't want them. So again, I'm just going to uh, rename or I'm going to make a copy of the background image. I'm going to go in and convert to smart object. Okay. And then it says to make six copies of the original chicken. So we'll call this our first copy, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I've got six copies and place one in each group. Okay, so I'll take background copy six, put it in watercolor, background copy five, whoops. Background copy five, we'll go into pencil drawing. Background copy four into dry brush and graphic pen. Background copy two or three into poster edges. Background copy two into find edges and diffuse. And the background copy goes into the color halftone. Okay. Then I'll turn each one of these off for now. So I've still got my background image here, my original background image. Um, oh, turn off water color. Okay. And then it says go into the half color halftone group. Duplicate the chicken layer, and then do filter pixelate color halftone. So let me turn on my color halftone layer. Again, this layer was um, the original layer, and it is now a smart object, okay? And I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Command J. And then I'm going to go into filter pixelate color halftone. So filter pixelate color halftone. Okay, so it looks like I'm just going to leave these um, default settings the way it is. Hit OK. And you'll see I get this kind of dot matrix um, application on top of the image that's happening. Okay, um, but notice again, since I have smart filters on, I can turn that on or off at will. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and, and rename this layer um, color halftone, okay? So I know what's happening here. Okay, so I've got a color halftone layer. Then it says change the blending mode to multiply. So blending mode multiply. It's this little drop down where it says normal. I'm going to find multiply. Okay, so now what that's doing is it's kind of um, it's darkening the image underneath it instead of being its own like brighter image. So multiply kind of darkens. If, if you see inside of this group, the first one is darkened. All of these items uh, between the brackets are darkening ones, just like this one that says lighten. All of these items um, within this lighten the image in some way. Okay, so we've got our color halftone and it says flip up the arrow at the left to close the group. Okay, so that's it. That's our color halftone group. Okay, I'll change this background copy to just say original. Okay. So that is how to make a color halftone adjustment on an image. So we go from what was that to this. Looks a little bit like maybe a comic book or a pixelated printed um, something using the color halftone. Okay, so we'll flip that up. Uh, looks like next we will probably go to find edges in diffuse. So it says duplicate the chicken layer again. So we're inside of find edges in diffuse. We've got our original. Duplicate it. And then it says stylize find edges. Okay, so I'm going to filter, stylize, find edges. Okay, as you can see, it found my edges and kind of darkened them up. This is so what, what Photoshop is doing is looking for areas of the image where the contrast changes abruptly. So we go here from like red to green, red to white. There, it's looking for these contrast shifts in the image. And then it finds those and where there are larger contrast shifts, it, it applies a dark line, okay? And then we're going to, it says make this layer invisible. So we'll just turn off the eyeball. On the layer below, go to filter, blur, Gauss, Gaussian blur. Okay, so this is the original chicken image. On this layer, I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And it says pick a radius of two pixels. So you can just type right in here, two. Okay, okay, okay. And then I am going to go to Filter, Stylize, Diffuse, okay. Go to filter, stylize, diffuse. Okay, and it says use normal mode and apply the filter three times. Okay, so I'm going to select normal and hit OK. And then to reapply the filter, um, the way that works is you can just press Command F, probably Control F if you're on Windows, and it reapplies the last filter you did. It's just like if you went up to the menu and see how it says diffuse here. If I were to select that, it's just reapplying the last filter I did. Okay, so I can press Command F, it will reapply the, reapply the filter and hit OK. So now I can see, since I'm working with a smart object, that I've applied that filter three times, and then underneath the diffuse glow that I've applied, I have this Gaussian blur. Okay, so normally we wouldn't see all this happening, it would just be applying it to the image and it would be done. But this way I can see exactly which um, filters I applied and how many times here. And I can, can choose to either use them or not, or turn it off, or double click and adjust it. Okay, so we've got that. Now it says make the top layer visible and change the blending mode to color burn. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this layer. I will call this um, find edges, because that's what we did. This layer we did um, diffuse, we'll just call it diffuse, so I'll change it from saying being original because it doesn't doesn't look like the original image. I'm going to change it to say diffuse. Okay, now on this layer we turn it back on and change the blending mode to color burn.
color burn. So color burn is in the darkened group, so obviously it is darkening the image. And basically what it's doing is any light areas of the image aren't applied, um, but it's any dark areas of the image, it kind of darkens. So what we get is this effect of taking what is the outline from where we did the find edges and applying that outline on top of an image of the chicken where it was kind of um, where it was kind of softened up by by doing the uh, Gaussian blur and diffuse outline okay so we can apply this and it, and it's like it's like putting an outline on top of an image and it makes it feel a little bit more like a drawn illustration um, okay so that's find edges and diffuse okay so the next one is poster edges so this is saying to go into our poster edges and it says filter filter gallery artistic poster edges so with that layer selected I'm just gonna call it poster edges with that layer selected, I'm going to go into Filter, Filter Gallery, and it said Artistic Poster Edges. So it's in the Artistic group. So there, see how there's all these different groups of filters? So under the Artistic group should be a Poster Edges, and there it is. Okay, and then it says Edge thickness four, edge density two, and posterization three. Edge thickness four, edge intensity, I think it said two. Edge density, okay, so it, it might be that Photoshop used to say density. Here it's intensity, okay? So we'll set that at two, and then posterization to three. Okay, and see what it's doing. The, the poster edge is, is kind of similar to find edges, how it was, it's finding the edges of the image and darkening them, but then it's kind of softening the other colors and making it a little bit more, um, more like a graphic poster effect. Okay, so we'll hit okay. And then we will go to filter, blur, smart blur. I'll just make Photoshop a little smaller here. Okay, so we're going to go to Filter, Blur, Smart Blur. I guess I should be checking the stream to see if there's anybody in the chat, just in case. Not many people have been coming to watch the live stream, but I'm just looking at that real quick here. Um, nope, nobody here which is fine. Okay, so back to it. So now we've got our smart blur, our smart blur. And it says filter blur, smart blur, radius set to 40. I'll go in here and type 40. Threshold set to 68, 68. Quality high, mode normal. Okay, so all those settings are in. Um, and there it does a smart blur. So since we are using smart filters, we can actually see what that's doing. So it's, it's going in and kind of, it's finding, basically it's, it's not a very strong effect, but um, it seems to be finding some of these extra small areas of black in the background and kind of minimizing some of that. Okay, um, that doesn't feel very strong to me. You can choose to leave that setting there. I'm just going to go in and kind of mess with this a little bit more and see what it does. Um, drop my threshold a little bit. Maybe I'll raise my threshold. What happens on a low threshold. Okay, so I'll wait for that to apply. So it's it's not really looking very much different from the settings I chose before. But that's the nice thing about using smart objects and smart filters is you can adjust it later. 
you know, if, if you think it needs a, a slight change, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so that is the poster edges group. Just keep that in there and turn that layer off. Okay, next up is dry brush and graphic pen. So we'll turn that layer in there. And it says duplicate the chicken layer and name it graphic pen. Okay, so duplicate this, name it graphic pen. Okay, and then make this layer invisible for now. Okay, so we'll turn it off. Name the other layer dry brush. Dry brush, okay. And then it says filter, filter gallery, artistic dry. Okay, so filter, filter gallery. Under the artistic group, I'm gonna choose dry brush. Okay, and then it says uh, using a brush, size of five, detail of eight, texture of one. So brush size of five, brush detail eight, texture set to one, and right here, yep, dry brush. Okay, so see it, it kind of um, turns it into almost a painting looking kind of image. Um, gives it kind of blobs of color a little bit, so we'll hit okay there and basically it's turning it into almost a graphic drawing, okay? And then next we will probably go into make the graphic pen layer visible. Uh-huh, turn this on. Set the foreground color to black. So when it says the foreground color, that's this right here. You can reset the foreground and background colors here to black and white by just clicking on the little black and white icon. So that's where I just click to set my foreground color to black. Um, you can also, um, if these are set to something else. Whoops, I just, I just undid. What did I do? I undid my dry brush filter. Let me go back in and put that back in real quick. Excellent. Press Command Z and couldn't get it back. Okay, so the other way that you can set this to black and white is press D, and that means default colors. Okay, so that's setting that. Uh, that's the shortcut for that. Okay, so set the foreground color to black. Um, go to Filter, Filter Gallery, Sketch, Graphic Pen. Okay, so the reason for setting the foreground color to black is this specific filter uses the color of the foreground when it's applying the uh, filter, okay? So I'm gonna go into filter, uh, filter gallery, and choose sketch. So there is a sketch group, and I'm gonna choose graphic pen, okay? And so this is kind of a sketchy strokes um, image when you're using the graphic pen it says set the stroke length to 15 which it is light dark balance to 50 and stroke direction right diagonal so it looks like those are all defaults okay and then I'm gonna hit OK and then it says set the blending mode of graphic pen layer to soft light at 100% opacity okay so I'm gonna drop this down find soft light and keep it at 100% opacity. And so what this is doing is it's taking those graphic pen strokes and applying them to um, the dry brush layer underneath to make it look as if it, are a, it was a sketched kind of image, okay? So a lot of the, a few of the filters now that we've looked at are doing this. They're taking um, one layer and using that layer to do the color of the image and then using another layer at a different blending mode on top to apply a line quality to that illustration, okay? So those are two aspects of illustration, right? Is the color of it and the, um, the uh, line quality of an illustration. Those are two major aspects. So since we are taking photos and turning them into illustrations, um, that is a typical, typical approach, is figuring out how to do the color and then figuring out how to do the line. 
Okay, so that's our dry brush and graphic pen. Um, next is the pencil drawing. This is our second to last. I'm going to turn on pencil drawing. Sorry. Sorry, you have to hear me swallow. Okay, so now under pencil drawing, we're going to go into image adjustments, hue and saturation. Image adjustments, hue and saturation. Okay, and it says to pull the saturation slider all the way to the left, and then hit okay, and then duplicate the layer. Okay, so we've got a black and white image now. Duplicate the layer, invert the new layer. So what invert does on a Mac, it's command I, probably control I on a Windows machine. What invert does is it takes all the uh, tones and colors in an image and makes them opposite. So you'll see this go basically to a negative kind of print version. Okay, and then it says change the blending mode to color dodge. And basically color dodge uh, brightens the image or darkens it um, where it's bright or dark. So, so because I inverted it, I took a black and white image, I inverted it, or I duplicated it, and then inverted it, and then applied color dodge. So because I inverted it, it's making my canvas white now, okay? Because this layer that is the opposite of this one is exactly changing everything in this one to be um, zeroed out, and it's changing it all to white, okay? So it's supposed to be white like this. Okay, and then it says to, if this turns everything white, it's okay, that's what's supposed to happen. Yes, okay? And you go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Okay, excuse me. You go into Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Okay, and as you can see, even having a two pixel blur on it starts to reveal some of the image. What this is doing is it's blurring out the details I'm not even sure who that is. I'm not going to answer it because I'm in the middle of this, but um, let me turn off the layer underneath. So it's taking this layer, and in fact, I'll turn off this. It's taking this layer, and it's, it's blurring it when I do the blur, right? So the details that this one are negating and the one below it, those details and the one below start to appear as this one gets more blurry. Okay, so if I go back in here, blur, Gaussian blur, and I start increasing this blur, it starts finding more and more of the image underneath. If I do this at 100% blur, it's almost back to how the image was um, before this layer was applied, okay? But in this way, if we keep the, the radius relatively low, we can start to show some of the edges of the image and it almost looks like a pencil drawing okay we're in the pencil drawing group after all so it almost starts to look like a pencil drawing as you drag the slider to change the blur amount the pencil sketch will begin to appear the example has a Gaussian blur 4.8 which is just happens to be where I'm at so the greater the blur the wider and darker the lines and shadows become okay and then there is a dodge and burn optional layer Okay, so I can create a new layer for this dodge and burn by click on this little new layer icon. Change the blending mode to soft light. Blending mode, soft light. Opacity 100%. And then fill with soft light neutral color. Oh, okay, there's probably another option. If I go to, instead of doing the new layer right here, I'm gonna go up to layer, new, and then select this, where it says layer dot dot dot, that means there's gonna be other options for me to do. So I'm gonna go to layer new, layer dot dot dot. Okay, so this gives me a new layer, and I'm gonna call this dodge and burn. It says color, Blending mode, soft light.
Okay, so it says fill with soft light neutral color. That's what we're going to do. That's It's basically filling this new layer that I'm making with 50% uh, gray. Okay, so now I have this 50% uh, gray layer. What, it, what I can do is in this layer then, I can come in with either a black or a white uh, brush. And what I can do is if, I, if I'm using black on this layer, it's taking that 50% gray and making it darker, and it's making the lines darker as I draw in here. It might be a little bit hard to see in the video, but what you can see it's doing is it's darkening the lines that are in there as I come in and paint over it on this layer with black. And, and what it's doing is this layer um, being soft light um, either brightens or darkens the image where it is, um, where it's say black, it darkens it more, where it would be white on this layer, it lightens it more. And since the entire layer is 50% gray, it's doing nothing. But as I change where it's 50% gray and put in some darker um, paint, it is making the image underneath darker. And if I were to go in here, um, I'll just press X to switch between my background and foreground colors. X switches between that. Okay, I'll go in with white and paint with white and it starts lightening where I'm painting and starts kind of hiding that layer underneath. Okay, so that's what that optional uh, dodge and burn does. If you think you might want to use this pencil technique in the future, you may want to use that. Okay, um, so that should be the last step for the pencil drawing. Yep, let's turn that off and go into our final group, the watercolor group. Okay, so here we are going to take our image. Let's call this, did I rename stuff in here? Let's call this um, Okay. Let's call this one watercolor. Okay, and it says uh, make a copy of the pencil drawing group using the flyout at the top right corner of the layers panel. Okay, so I, it's saying to make a copy of the pencil drawing, which I have here. If I click on this little icon, I should get a duplicate group option. Okay, so I'm just going to, um, wait. Make a copy of the pencil drawing group using the flyout at the top right corner of the layers panel, using the same flyout merge group. Okay, so. You don't need to use this. You can just press Command J or Control J on a Windows machine to duplicate that group. Um, and then I think I'm selecting these two and going in here and going into uh, Merge Group. Is there a Merge Group? Merge Group. Okay. So, okay, so what that did was it took this is the copy of the pencil drawing group. I have the group selected. And so it's taking the entire contents of the group. When I go here and I go to merge group, and it's taking the contents of that group and just turning it into a layer. It's taking everything that was there and turning it into a layer. So I have this pencil drawing image now um, that I'm probably gonna be putting on top of the color. So again, another case where we're using um, line quality over top of color to create a an illustration effect. Okay, so now I have a, a new layer named pencil drawing copy. Move this layer into the watercolor group above the chicken. Okay, so there we go. In the pencil drawing copy layer, go to filter, filter gallery, artistic, watercolor. So with that, what this should be is on the layer that has the color in it. I'm going to go to filter, filter gallery, artistic, watercolor. Filter, filter gallery, into the artistic group, and choose watercolor. Okay. Then it says brush detail nine, shadow intensity plus texture one. Okay, both of those are set to one. Blending mode should be overlay. So once I hit okay, 
I'm going to change this blending mode to overlay. Okay. Oh, I'm actually going to undo that and step back again. I should have been doing that to the pencil drawing layer. Okay, and sorry the instructions are a little bit unclear, but um, I did not make them. So, okay, so this layer, image, we're going to go into filter, filter gallery, artistic watercolor, filter gallery, artistic, and watercolor. Okay, and so it gives it this kind of graphic outline look. I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. And it's taking that kind of outline effect and putting it on top of the color. And notice how it kind of brightens everything a little bit. So then it says on the original layer, go in and say filter, blur, smart blur, blur filter, blur, smart blur, radius and threshold set to 100. So 100 there, 100 there, quality low, mode normal. Okay, and then it says adjust levels to intensify color. So I'm going to go to image, adjustments, levels, and I'm going to mess with these to um, adjust the color. Okay, so real quick um, tutorial on histograms. This is a histogram. This left side of the histogram are dark. Um, pixels in the image. The right side of the histogram are bright pixels in the image and everything else is everything in between. So as we can see it is saying that the layer I'm working in, although it doesn't look like that to us, the layer I'm working in doesn't have a lot of bright pixels. Okay, So to kind of adjust an image to get it feeling right, sometimes you want to just take this bring it all the way over here and say, okay, these pixels that were kind of in the middle are now the bright pixels. And then you can take this middle slider and kind of adjust where the midpoint is. So it's just saying to adjust it so that the um, color is intensified. It looks pretty intense to me. And that is our watercolor group. So basically this is intended to look like kind of paint uh, with a little bit of a... Um, little bit of a sketchy kind of outline on top of the color in the group. Okay, so that is our watercolor group. And that should be the tutorial. So I'm just going to save it. Put my name on it. I guess it doesn't matter so much for you guys, but... Okay, and then I would uh, turn it in. I would upload it to my... Um, file sharing service and, and turn it in. Okay, so again, we've got our watercolor, pencil drawing, graphic pen, poster edges, find edges, and color halftone. Okay, and um, remember that the smart filter lets you adjust all that stuff after the fact. Okay, and you can turn them on and off, choose what to keep, what to get rid of. So that covers this exercise. This will be the end of the video for today. Um, next lecture will be presenting project two and giving some student examples and outlining what that is. Um, in the meantime, good luck on your uh, first projects. Let me know if you have any questions or problems. Alrighty.